Let's see. We're late. Another week. Like, I don't know what this is. Wouldn't surprise me to figure out it's asbestos. Again with the stupidity. Poor Sydney, I'm sorry, baby. So that was cooking smoke from one of our inconsiderate neighbors. What was that, honey? Nothing, I said fucking morons. He's kind of on the fence. Sydney didn't even move, poor thing. She was so miserable when I went when I came down here. It's the worst sound in the world. It actually turns my stomach. Oh, poor baby. I'm sorry. The really annoying thing about this incident is that the smoke detectors in the units themselves don't set off the complex wide alarm. So I bet the people got smoke in their apartment, their smoke detectors went off, and then they opened their door, which let the smoke out into the hallway, and it was the detectors in the hallway that set off the complex wide alarm. So they were inconsiderate to their neighbors by setting off their own smoke alarms and then opening their doors and setting off the complex wide ones. And sure, I'm annoyed of having to put up with it, but what really makes me piss is that it makes them so nervous too. I mean, she's going back under the bed. I mean, this sounds annoying to us, we could, but we can understand what's going on versus the pets, which just freak out because of the extreme noise. And there's just no excuse, no excuse. Enjoy your little midnight snacky. Mm -hmm. Did you? Just camera shy. Don't be camera shy. I think she just wants a little petting session. Isn't that right? Oh, that feels so good, doesn't it? Stretchy. I think we're getting back to normal. You're cute. Thank you. Well, it's true. I appreciate that. It's like the best way to start the morning. Tuesday morning, too. In the elevator? No, you! Oh. Looking at you! Jesus. Wednesday morning, we were actually on time. I, I, I don't know, I've got this feeling of forgetting something. I can't figure out what it is. Let's see, I've got my lunch, I've got my bag, I've got my laptop. Oh well. Today was a good day. My students had a client presentation. They did very well. And, you know, nothing went wrong. So, that's good. And I feel prepared for tomorrow. I think it's time to go to bed though, because tomorrow's Thursday, and that's the early day. So, it's Thursday morning. Managed to get to school only about five minutes late. Well, ten minutes late at this point. Hi. You're certainly pretty. Look what Richie brought home. A copy of Charlie Hebdo. Where'd you find it? Newsstand in Pacific Heights on Fillmore Street. One of the few, if not only, places in the U.S. that was able to get copies. I was talking to the lady who owns it and she said that people from all over the country were wanting it and apparently she made a lot of money. Good. Well, something tells me there's at least a store or two in New York that has them. Well, yeah. She said one of the few places in the U.S. that were able to get them. But her family, I believe, is French, and there's a French distributor or something. Mm. And she told me the story, and it made perfect sense. And, and it's a really cool newsstand, which I never saw before. It's just where I parked was the first time I had to walk by it. And I loved the smell of the place. And... <laughs> The smell of the place. It was paper. Uh, it's stuff uh, you don't experience anymore. Yeah. Because it's sad. I love newsstands. I always loved newsstands. Well, you'll have to go back and buy stuff there. I will. Definitely. He will. <clears throat> he act, he's like so insane about paper, he won't subscribe to magazines because he doesn't like the post office messing them up. He wants them pristine. Well, they're all in good condition. You're so cute. You are so, so cute, baby. Did you have a nice dinner? Hmm? Did you? Nice dinner? Speaking of dinner, I've got to go cook ours. I'm in the midst of reading something like series. Authors J. Bell, and they are just so good. 
It starts with summer, then winter, just finished autumn. Still have to read spring. The gay romance novels that basically covers the same set of events between the characters. The cool part is each book is written from the point of view of a different character. So, like, there's some key scenes where it's told from the different character's point of view, but then each book elaborates on other parts of the story that aren't told in the others. I think it's a really inventive technique. I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, I'm really into it and really, really enjoying these books. They're making a movie of something like Summer, which should be out in the next year or so. That may be kind of interesting. I don't know. Just really love the books, though. So, hearty recommendation. Something like, yes. Friday, it is going to be a very busy day, I think. We've got the window people coming this morning to try to fix the windows, although they won't. They'll just look at them and say we have to order more parts. And then I've got a bunch of errors around this afternoon. So, busy, busy, busy. I feel like this mirror here is new. I don't remember it being up there before. <laughs> That's why that green forklift was here. They're replacing the glass panels above the entryway for the grocery store. Suddenly everything makes sense. And this traffic isn't going anywhere. Fucking buses. Have I said how much I hate Muni lately? I'm so frustrated right now. It's like a little bit after nine. I wanted to be back here before nine because the window people are supposed to be here between nine and eleven. It took an hour to get downtown, drop off Rich, and get back here. And I didn't even stop to do any errands. And it's all because of construction in this goddamn city. Like, Every street, literally every street in San Francisco is under construction right now. Every single street. The window people said they would be here between 9 and 11, so I rushed home after dropping off Rich. Did not have my waffle, which not having my Friday morning waffle was like a really big deal. But of course, if I ignored the time and just stopped and had it, they would have been calling me at 9 o'clock on the dot trying to get in. It's now 9.42, I could have easily had my waffle and been back here by now, and of course they've yet to show up. They probably won't show up until after 11. That's what I'm gonna bet right now. And they're not gonna be able to finish the job today because they never do. They always have to order extra parts or the parts they bring are wrong. We come to the reservoir. Guys are gonna go for a hike and I'm gonna sit in the shade and be because my ankle is still tender. Yes, we went to Home Depot and bought a toilet seat for Valentine's Day. Isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah. It's Sunday and it's been pretty much a lazy day. It's like late afternoon already. I'm cooking because I've got two of the Blue Apron meals to make. I didn't make any yesterday. Gotta make up for it. I've got a whole wheat rigatoni with mushroom and Swiss chard. It smells pretty fantastic. And then I'm gonna do this warm squash and kale salad. So we'll have both of those tonight and should have plenty of leftovers for lunch this week as well. Richie's out running errands and uh, I've basically been reading all day. Trying to take it easy. We went for that walk yesterday and I think I overdid it because my ankle swelled up again and slightly painful. Not good. Once again I spent the weekend lost in the Something Like series. This weekend I started and finished Spring, which is the fourth book and the final one in the series season. Wow, J. Bell has become an amazing author. I can actually see his writing improving in each book and the fourth one, Spring, is just an emotional roller coaster. If the idea of a gay romance has any appeal to you at all, I strongly, strongly recommend these four books. We have neighbors out there yelling. I don't know what's going on, it's kind of annoying. Rich is gonna have a fit when he comes upstairs to go to bed. That's where I'm going right now. Time to shut this puppy down for another week.